Hi everyone, this is Eileen Burns and welcome to Top Tips to Deal with Shock. Now in today's video, I am going to be sharing some very simple but effective tips to help it might be yourself or a client or maybe a student that is maybe dealing with a shock, maybe some trauma or you know maybe they suddenly had some grief or loss and it's been very overwhelming for them and there's some simple strategies that you can use to support a client or student without getting into certain types of therapy if you're not a psychotherapist if you're not a trauma therapist obviously it's very key you've got to be very careful how you deal with people particularly in the initial stages of shock so here is a few a few top tips and this can also help you if you've recently had some sort of shock or loss or, 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 or you know something that's come out the blue and something that's not been expected So one of the most simple things that we encourage people to do or, or I would support someone to do if they suddenly had some sort of shock and loss is just to stop, okay? Stop and breathe, okay? Now, we often don't... Um, we forget that when we're in a state of shock or trauma, that the body, it, it gives any fight, flight, or freeze, right? And basically, uh, when our body is in the fight, flight, or freeze response, uh, our, our shoulders and our muscles tend to really tighten up. Our heart starts to get faster and faster. And certain things within the body, um, basically the body's designed when it is, you know, when we've got these experiences that there's blood flow goes to certain areas of the body and there's some areas of the body that there's just no energy flow. So, for example, the, particularly in the, the fight or flight response, when we're, we're, we're re, it's basically preparing us to deal with that as a survival situation or an emergency situation. So we tend to have a lot of things go, the, the heart starts pumping faster, a breathing becomes more labored, but if you're holding a lot of tension in upper chest area, the, the upper um, you know, muscular area, the lung area, the back and things like that in the neck, basically what happens then you can struggle to breathe deeply because you're mostly chest breathing. And unfortunately, a lot of people are chest breathers anyway, for a variety of reasons, for a variety of reasons. So one of the things I always say to people is stop and just breathe. And what I mean is, you know, just be aware of your breath. Drop your shoulders. Feel into your body. Because when we're in shock or trauma or, or severe forms of stress or anxiety, basically we get, into, we get into our head, we're ruminating, we're going over what we're thinking, or we, we just can't come to terms. So we're very much still in the mind. So when you bring the awareness back to the body, Okay, it can yeah, it can be a little bit scary sometimes, but when we just bring and and, and get the person to get into the, the body and get into the breath and focus on the breath, focus on the breath first rather than alter it, focus it. That can really help the the body, you're, you're drawing attention to the body, you're helping the body, the fact you're even dropping your shoulders is giving you your energy and your chi in your body an opportunity to move. And it allows um, excess buildup of energy that, that accumulates and, and the hormones that accumulate at that point to start alleviating a little, even a little bit when we make a big difference, okay? Now, one of the things as well is Maybe I should go back actually and just highlight something. You can also obviously get into deep diaphragm breaths, okay? Um, and the key here is that when you allow your body into deep diaphragm breaths, the body relaxes. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit later on. But what happens is you're giving the 
you're basically allowing the body to release the tension, but you're also oxygenating the blood. You're allowing the body to get a deeper breath because again, as we said, we're chest breathing. Now, I teach relaxation therapy and one of the things that I don't tend to encourage too much is a focus that is all about the breath because for many years I saw a lot of clients who had went to therapists or different forms of, for example, even anxiety treatment and they actually felt that they, 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 they got worse when the practitioner was just focusing on breathing techniques and they became obsessed about the breathing. So I use a combination of techniques. I, I don't just focus on the breath. And I find that for certain clients, it's not always ideal it, 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 in certain situations, especially in shock, even though you want, of course, them to get a deep breath. There's a lot of breathing techniques that um, I suggest that, that the person doesn't focus on that first. And uh, there is a lot of reasons and it's, I don't have time to go into that at the moment. The first thing as well is when you've had a shock or anyone has had a shock, a trauma is be kind. So if it's happened to yourself, it's so important that you be kind to yourself, you be compassionate to yourself. Again, for someone else that just that ability to be kind and compassionate to someone can make things um, just that little bit softer and helps them calm down, helps them relax, helps them feel as if they're not alone or isolated, you know, and with shock, you know, comes a lot of a confusion and a tremendous amount of fear and the person can you know act very differently than the normal would act act very irrationally maybe not make sense so it's really really important that again if it's yourself or someone else that you are kind and compassionate except that shock or grief affects everyone differently and again you know it is it's, it's so important because they respond, even the process and how they, they come out the other end of that shock, our grief will be different. But again, if we can support them at the right way from the beginning, that can make a huge difference. It can encourage them to go through the process in a more natural and healthier way. So shock has different stages. The initial stage of shock can trigger denial, can trigger cognitive dissonance, can trigger, you know, even all sorts of other fears and traumas and it can bring up a lot of inner child trauma, wounding and other trauma that someone's had in their life. So again, that's why it's so important to be kind to yourself, be compassionate to yourself, be kind and compassionate to others during any sort of shock. Now self-soothing, and I'm talking about healthy self-soothing. Um, it's really important to encourage the person and get them on a more healthy self-soothing strategies than unhealthy ones. Sometimes people think they mean well. They suddenly, you know, they give someone a drink if they've had a shock, they give someone a cigarette, they give all sorts of things, but some things they can lead to even more complications. And you're basically setting the person up not to give them, you're not teaching them, you're not helping them create healthy anchors healthy strategies that will help them help be a bit more comforting, you know, that, that will, will help them in the long term and the short term. So most people use very unhealthy healthy self-soothing strategies to cope with anxiety, stress, trauma and shock. And in counselling psychotherapy, we talk a lot about, you know, self-soothing and the self-soothing, we tend to talk about negative things like um, eating too much, drinking alcohol, consuming alcohol, you know, maybe self-prescribing um, or even prescription medication that may not actually be right for, for that person, um, you know, or something that's it's very addictive or can cause other problems. Um, other people cope with these things. They, they actually just deny it goes on and they may be, be a workaholic or they might and do take something to the extreme and um, there's a lot of things that we think um are really extremely healthy and they're normally healthy but again they can be uh we have an addiction to them so even sometimes like fitness and exercise is a fantastic way to support our health and reduce anxiety and stress but again 
if some people take that to the extreme, they can become addicted to that. And again, they've not got a balance because they're not finding ways to be still, be still in the mind and calm. But one of the, the most simple things that you can do right away to help someone and or you know to self-soothe more calming is just to offer them something like a warm cuppa, you know, a warm cup of tea. Um, something it's better obviously that's not <laughs> stimulants in it because again the nervous system is half a shock um but there is a things like um one of the things that i used to always have in my, a bag and just because i, I most you know I, I work online now it's different but was i carried um rescue remedy back rescue remedy um, um i was a flower at a studied diploma level of flower essences there's lots of flower essences that you can use but back rescue remedy is very useful for shock trauma and anxiety and stress. And it's a really useful thing to have or to advise clients. It, the great thing about it is it can be used with other medication. It's not the type of remedy that you would get um, addicted. It works on a kind of vibrational level that balances the vibration energy. So it works in a kind of soft way, but you know, a very useful and effective way. So that can be one way just allowing the person to talk if they want to talk or just being with them, giving them some sort of support um, and learning self-soothing strategies, which I'll, I'll talk a little bit about a couple in a minute. But, you know, even advising them and, you know, from the beginning that letting them know it's okay that this, you know, having a shock is something that, that we all can struggle with. And, um, you know, that it can be a good useful idea to go for a wee bit of counselling or therapy just to cope with it and also to manage it effectively. And I think this is the most important thing. We are lucky in, in the world at the moment because in many ways there is so many different types, type of techniques available and tools, self-help tools to help people in so many forms of therapy. and you know many highly qualified and experienced people that that can deal with these sort of things but um also we also even though we have that we still have a, a lot of unhealthy patterns and conditions in societies and very unhealthy strategies that are used when people are coping with stress and it's important that we use holistic approach and that we teach you know, teach and help people to basically use healthier self-soothing strategies and health and have healthier life skills to cope and manage, you know, with all sorts of things in her in her life. And one of the things that I learned in my life, it's not what you're dealt with, it's how you deal with it. Learn how you learn how to deal with it. That is what makes a difference. So it's really important. So another um, really important, well, something that can be very useful, I'm not saying maybe just important, but very useful um, type of remedies or, or therapies that, you can, that people can use themselves that can actually help with shock, trauma, stress, anxiety is essential oils. Essential oils are extremely versatile and therapeutic and many can be used therapeutically Beautifully to help reduce anxiety, stress, or the fear response. Now, some are calm, relaxing, grounding, and some are more gentle and soothing. So what a lot of people don't realize is there's a lot of psychological and physiological benefits to essential oils. Essential oils has certain compounds, and some of them are, I'll give you an example, some of the examples that that you would be familiar with that are physiological and they're anti-inflammatory, antiseptic, antibacterial, antispasmodic. So a lot of them have different pro uh, properties. They have compounds and that's why actually essential oils are actually used in certain medicines. They're also copied 
and a lot of people don't really reckon, don't realise this, but a lot of pharmaceutical medicine, they take synthetic copies of things and then they combine them together. And there's a lot of reasons why they do that. And one of the reasons is why they can't patent a natural product. So basically they can't maximise their money. So that's why the pharmacy industry does what it does. But um, some of the most useful essential oils that I would say uh, uh, can be really helpful for someone getting through particularly shock or grief as frankincense and cinderwood will is one of the ones that will make them very in the initial stages when they've just found out very grounded and calm just very it just helps bring the person down into a state of I suppose it, it lowers their heightened alertness their, their heightened fear right because again as I said the Central nervous system has had a shock, you know, the heart's had a shock, the organs have had a shock, you know, your mind, your emotions had a shock. So that can be kind of grounding and calming. Now, they are very base oils, so in the long term, if you're going to use them, you know, for a little period of time, I would be adding other ones that are uplifting into that, right? But two oils that are very soothing and they've got a feminine energy and they can be quite... They work, they can work kind of soothe in a child in a way and soothe any wound. And because what we've got to remember is when we have shocks or trauma, a lot of that connect can connect in with previous trauma and old wounding that we've had from, from child from childhood or in other times in our life. So that we want something to be gentle and and, and, and feminine at times, it's comforting and it's soothing. And lanolang is very comforting. It's also useful for it to stop and reduce nightmares. Rose is very useful for grief. And it's, again, it's it's just like a soft and gentle oil. Clary Sage is particularly useful for shock and grief. And it's also useful for severe depression. The only thing that I would say about Clary Sage, um, it's for someone very hyper. So if someone that's on the hyper stage, it's not always a great one, but it, it does, it can in emergency situations, put a couple of drops even in the bath. If you can get them in the bath, it's really useful because it just raises the moods, particularly for the real shock or a loss, and their mood has completely plummeted and they're, shut, they're shutting down. You can put them in a, a, some, you know, maybe five or six drops in that situation, get them in the bath. There's other ways that you can apply oils um, and even sometimes just smelling the oils, what happens is the scents actually stimulate the nerve endings in the olfactory tract, uh, and that you know stimulates certain responses in the brain, which again will affect your mood. And that's why certain essential oils are some are more calming and relaxing, some are more uplifting and refreshing and motivating. So, you know. Just because the, a lot of people use them because they like them to relax the smell, you know, we, we may not realise that they actually have do have therapeutic properties and certain properties that will actually make the, the body, it starts balancing. So there's some oils that are actually designed to, to balance the hormones and things like that. Now, citrus oils are like lemon, orange, and even things like bergamot can be very uplifting and refreshing. And in fact, Bergamot is an essential oil that's often used in a lot of men's aftershave. And it's actually a, an oil that can be used to just lift the mood of men maybe suffering from depression. So it's worth knowing. Okay. Now, get grounded. It, it may sound um, very happy. Okay. But I'm going to just, you know, talk about grounding a wee bit and why I support them today. When we're in a state of shock or fear, it can basically blow out or deeply affect a root chakra. So a root chakra is like a, an energy system within the body. Uh, it sits in the pelvic area, the lower pelvic area. And basically, it's if you think about it on a physical level, it's to do where our reproductive organs is, but it's also where um, when we've had shock or fear, basically that it's like almost a survival if it's too much of a shock a trauma, it can blow out, it can really block, you can have a block of trauma in that area, right? And that 
kind of can shut down the, the chi flowing of uh, our vital force. And we need a vital force because no matter what, when what kind of anxiety or stress we're suffering from, you, you want this, you want the body to be able to bounce back. You want the body to be able to function as well as it can so it can cope. You want the person to be psychologically, mentally and emotionally emotionally and physically you know as balanced and as strong as possible right so our survival and re reproductive chakra maintains that vital energy and life force and when it kind of gets atta attacked in the way if you think about because that's the way the body feels attacked when we're in shock is that you want the person needs to feel safe because basically what's happened is it's 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 some sort of threat to them emotionally, mentally, and physically. So grounding helps us feel more safe, right? When we get connected to Mother Earth, it it, it tries to restore that the, 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 there is some sort of connection. And on a sort of as an unconscious level, I suppose, in an energetic way, um it helps us feel more, you know, earth and close to Mother Nature, but also. The reality is that most of us are in heads, most of us actually go about a day very ungrounded because we're not connecting with the earth, we're not spending time enough in the earth. We're living in toxic brick or concrete or even plastic, you know, highly plastic houses. You know, there's things that we're, we're not a natural environment. So we're very disconnected from the earth. We're very disconnected from our innate roots and part of nature and, and, and the nurturing aspect of nature that supports growth. It's, you know, we forget that nature is an integral part of us. That's where we get our food. That's where we get, you know, light force, but everything has become so processed and toxic that we are very ungrounded. And there's lots of other reasons why we are very ungrounded, particularly with modern te technology and the fact that we are in our head so when you help someone get grounded it can really help and obviously i talked about the frankincense and sandalwood but i'm going to share um, two very simple tips um one might seem a bit childish but it can be very useful just for someone just to quit just to or you know once if you're on your own or uh, you know, or a person doesn't mind doing this technique. But there's a technique called stomping where think about a child, just think about a child who stomps their feet, right? So what they're doing is when they're stomping their feet, they're making they're making a statement. But they're they're actually getting into their body and they're feeling the energy. When we're in shock and fear, we do not want to, we want to get away from the fear. We want that's what we want to do. We want to escape, we want to run away right but the reality is we have to get in your body energetically when you escape your body now that again it causes a, a from a healer's perspective and from also a therapeutic perspective when you it's you can actually energetic in a way leave your body and I know that sounds a bit strange but what I mean is we have different layers in our energetic field right and there's certain things that are meant to sit vibrationally in your energy field when we keep balance but when we're in shock it's like we want to climb out our body so basically then that shifts the energy you don't want that happening so what you want the person or yourself to be is fully in the body and when you you become aware of your feet particularly that helps you become more body aware instead of completely in your head and out of your body you want to be fully in the body even though it might feel hard get into the body feel the weight of your feet and stomp about like a child just you know for a wee while what you're doing you're bringing your awareness you know so again if you think about a, a way that a child um is more body aware but if you think about animals animals do certain things when they they've had a shock or trauma and they can shake about so that's another thing you could do this is not a grounding technique but see even just shaking that gets excess energy off that gets all that build up of you know the adrenal that the, the you know the cortisol the things that's built up that's like this it can be sometimes rage or fear and you want to try and release that so another and i should have really put that probably on the screen that you know or on the slides was you know giving yourself a good shake about shaking your legs that can actually release but to get actually grounded the stomping the feet and just actually being fully aware of the feet right but you can use this next te 
technique with us or separately is rooting down in the earth. And, and most of us healers, we do it, you know, we use it as, we do it different ways, but even just becoming aware again of the weight of your feet and then aware of your root chakra and opening, you know, just on an unconscious, sorry, a conscious level asking the root chakra and the chakras in your feet to connect down into the earth and to look as if, imagine as if you're, 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 you're creating long roots into the earth, right? And you, the, you, you belong to the earth, right? That you're part of the earth, right? Again, it's a sense of comfort and nature and it gets us grounded and it helps us um, in a way kind of feel the support of our body instead of trying to run away from it and trying to escape from it we actually feel and recognize that there's strength within our body our body can survive this our body has the strength to support and so does nature okay now the havening is something that um a lot of therapists are learning now and it's actually something that there are all different levels of havening, right? But havening is a, a form of self-soothing and simple effect of trauma therapy that encourages the body from the trauma response into self-soothing. Now, something that I've saw, saw for a long time, a lot of teachers been using, and they use simple havening techniques, even in schools and primary schools and things like that, just to help kids self-soothe. Now, there is, if you go to an actual havening therapist, which obviously it's always better to go to the therapists that, you know, are qualified in these things for certain actual trauma therapy, obviously. But there is simple havening, very simple strategies that can just take two or three minutes where you're just doing simple um they're not full havening techniques, but they're just simple strategies that can self-soothe, basically. And when I talked about the self-soothing. So I would encourage you, you know, if you're interested in this mode, is to look it up. You can look it up, you know, different videos in, in YouTube. And there's very simple strategies that can be useful. Now, relaxation therapy. Now, relaxation therapy is one of the things, the main things that I offer in my training school for therapists. And a lot of people have a sort of very limited view on relaxation therapy. They don't realise the relaxation therapy is a lot wider than, than what it is and how there is different techniques and how to use it and how to use it the most safest and effective way and how to encourage it and, you know, and help clients. But relaxation therapy includes a variety of tools to help and move a person from the anxiety and stress response to help them relax deeply. So it moves you from the stress response, the survival response into the relaxation response. And, you know, a lot of people um, misunderstand what relaxation really means. When I talk about relaxation therapy, we're talking about deep relaxation. We're talking about deep relaxation in the muscles, deep relaxation in the mind and the energy field. You know, there's a whole thing. It's a, a different level of what most people associate with relaxation. Many people today think can just sitting back and watching the telly is relaxation. When the reality, it's not really, it's not anything really real like that's a distraction. That's not proper deep relaxation. So muscle relaxations are highly effective at helping reduce stress, muscle tension and stagnant energy from trauma. So it's something that, you know, you could start encouraging the person. Again, it takes their mind off them as well. They're focused on certain bodies. We, we use different ones. Um, most of, you know, they tend to be safer, but there is certain thing, conditions with people with um, spinal injuries and certain types of conditions that we would recommend certain ones are, you know, certain ones over another. Um, but I do, if this is something you're interested in learning about to become a relaxation therapist, you can, you will learn more than my, my, my site. But you, but also I do have some courses that do have some relaxation techniques that can just help with your own anxiety or stress. Now, heart expansion. So one of the things that happens when we're in shock, when we're in fear or when we're hurt, we're emotionally hurt or we're emotionally lost, is that actually we shut down our heart, the energy field within our heart and our, our light. Our light, if you think about our spiritual force is very much in our heart. And, um, and when 
we shut down our heart when we become more and more fearful and afraid and that can come in all sorts of disguises it can come from the shock of um, maybe a relationship something you're shocked about that or a loss or a trauma or something you found out that's that's awful or terrible it's fear kicks in or like it's like almost like as if sometimes you can imagine it's like big stones in your heart or you, know, you just want to lock it and lock it away and actually that's the worst thing you can do it's important that you keep your heart open right your heart is your light your heart is your vibration your heart is keeps you strong even though you might not realize it the more you open your heart you actually raise your vibration and you get stronger okay and you get more support but when we shut down <clears throat> we attract other negative vibrations we attract fear we actually attract we also trigger other people's fear so if you think about it if you're very fearful or you're in trauma or whatever and you're around your children and you're in fear you will trigger and, and cause them to have more fear right and you'll trigger little elements that's within them so it's important you keep your heart open so for the person that is going through it and anyone that's around them okay heart open heart open keep your energy force and your light strong open your heart expand your heart and i would say this is so important at the moment a lot of people at the moment are finding out so many things about that's going on in the world and things are maybe not just as what they seemed you know maybe trusted governments medical systems have trusted all sorts of things um and they feel betrayed they are you know they're confused and they maybe don't know sometimes also what happens here is people don't know what to do or what to think and some things can maybe feel seem so unbelievable which causes cognitive dissonance and often when we're shocked we just don't want to know and maybe it's too hard and it's really really whole, ha, important to help open the heart and you know there's different types of ways to do that but even just helping the person imagine there's a wee door and they're opening that door and imagine this ball of light and that's the, that's them within there and they're expanding that can make a difference open your heart expand your heart believe me it's one of the, the most powerful things you can do erase your vibration to help you feel strong and to help stop you your, your vibration go down and stop you falling into the depths of despair in any situation the light is is in many ways offers you know often stronger and often brighter than what we think at our core we are light and love we just don't realize that it's when we get into our head and we get into self-destruction and self-sabotaging patterns or inner fear or trauma that we bring our energy down so it's so important that our light is there and that we connect with other people's light okay now my favorite technique that i like to teach students for this type of situation I'm very much a, a, a practitioner and a therapist that likes to safe and effective practice because unfortunately I see today a lot of so, such fast track training, a lot of tools and techniques are just taught and people maybe don't have not maybe studied things like psychotherapy, you know, the mind, they don't understand a lot about trauma and things like that. So they don't recognise what can happen or they don't, you know, they've maybe not studied a lot of things. I can tell you all sorts of experiences that I've had where people maybe didn't understand the body system, the energy system and understand if people have certain maybe conditions, that some things may not be the best for reasons, you know, that they maybe never thought about. Um, and obviously when people are in states of trauma, and shock you know and grief and all that they're in a very very vulnerable state and it's so so important that you don't start act like, trying to act like the, the psychotherapist or the psychologist when you're not qualified to do that because um one of the things that unfortunately i saw for many years was many many clients feeling more damaged by by the therapist because when they were going through trauma and things like that someone not really understand what they were going through or trying to set up, I'm not saying play with the mind, but in a way it was. And so it's very careful, you know, it's about using strategies that are simple and effective. 
and helping them through that till they get the professional help they need if they do need that help. But one th thing that I find, find really useful and it was um, it's a five minute meditation technique. It's a Qigong based meditation that I actually adapted many years ago. And I was a situation um, <clears throat> when I started my self-employment, uh, I was I had been teaching meditation and I noticed that I had this enthusiasm for meditation and I was a lot more disciplined than most of the clients that attracted. And my circumstances getting into this type of work was very different from a lot of people that I know. I was, you know, I was young and, and very ill and had to find techniques just to get me through the day because of all these rare and chronic health challenges that nobody could see me help me with. So I had to find ways to cope with that. And when I went to teach it, it was just so much different. So what happened was I was looking for, you know, I was looking for different strategies that I could um, simplify things just to get people to start developing their skills. And I did find ways, but then I was um, asked to work with, um, it was teenagers and male teenagers who had a lot of challenges and, you know, anger issues, this type of thing. And I was looking for a technique that would be more palatable and easy to teach that they wouldn't find too boring, that would, you know, the more likely to use. And I came across a Qigong meditation and I'd just done a few things to change it to be more appropriate for what I was using. And it used acupressure. I had studied different things about, you know, meridian lines and energy lines. So I was a wee bit, you know, down that line and decided to just use that. And I, I couldn't believe it. It actually became the most popular te meditation technique and for, for, for quick, you know, anxiety and stress busting in all ages. I mean, and I taught, um, you know, I taught from, nursery age so we're talking about even you know there's three-year-olds in a class and maybe even younger than that to people in the 90s <laughs> I would down, get, go and do community things so a wide range of people and also from executives to carers to people that were disabled and this became um, you know it actually takes just over four minutes you can make it into a 10 minute or an eight minute can approximately eight minutes sorry but it's so easy, but uh, it does take a little time to practice it, I have to say, just to remember what to do, but it's a wee bit different than normal, most traditional types of meditation. There's just a little different slant to it, but I highly recommend it. Uh, you know, it's a very low cost price. You can get it from my training um, platform, and um, it's www.stresscoachtraining.co. And if you go to that site, you will be able to see, if you go to the courses section, you'll be able to look it up and see my five minute meditation course. So that this technique is really good because one of the things I would say about a lot of meditation, I actually don't recommend, if someone suggests shock or trauma, I don't recommend most types of meditation. You know, guided meditation, which is really guided visualization, that's a wee bit different, right? And it depends what you're doing. But if someone's never meditated before and you're trying to bring them into med meditation, they're not at the right stage. And again, it, it could just cause all sorts of problems. And I, again, there's a lot of people out there who don't understand that. So this technique's very useful because it works a wee bit slightly different. It changes the point of focus every minute, which gives the person, you know, they're not hanging too long, um, having space. It, that was one aspect that, that, that their mind starts racing off to all sorts of trauma, thoughts and ruminating. It just works in a way that, that can really support them in a gentle way. And it, it's a great way to gently introduce people to a meditation strategy and help them build a meditation strategy up. And meditation is one of the most highly effective ways to get people out their head and get people to be more calm and relaxed. And I mean, I've, you know, I've been someone that has invested very, very highly in my training and in my own therapy from a very young age. 
um, because of my health challenges and I've spent many, many thousands of pounds in training and, and, and all sorts of therapies and learning all sorts of things. I have to say, I always come back to, to teaching people meditation because it can really, really make a difference to people along with the relaxation therapy. And, you know, if you want to learn more about my accredited relaxation therapy training or my stress management training for coaches and therapists, you'll find more information again on the tra training platform, www.stresscoachtraining.co or www. and it's a um, stress and a middle, middle hyphen coach.co.uk where you get my blog and other information. So bye for now and thank you for watching.